In part one of our summer road trip series, we cross into Idaho, found a beautiful campsite just outside of Moab. We visited Canyonlands National Park and watched an amazing sunset in the desert. Join us for part two as we explore Colorado. here and it says stop I don't know what in the heck Google was talking about we saw signs for all this but I guess we're not going that way oh well it was a fun road we had nowhere to be back in the van All right, we are in Mesa Verde now. We're staying at the Moorfield Campground uh, for a night. We're gonna take off here pretty quick and go just explore the park, I guess. Uh, drive around up the loop. Uh, quite a bit of the upper part is closed for road construction. That kind of sucks. The Cliff Palace area, which is the biggest of the, um, of the sites up there, it's closed. I don't think you can get to it. We tried to get tour tickets for a ranger tour Literally, I was on the website as, and refreshed it as it opened up for the day we wanted it. And there, there was only 20 tickets available total for the entire day for today because I don't know why. It was, I was looking forward to this for so long. I'm but sure it's something to do with COVID. I don't, I don't know, um, but it's, <clears throat> we couldn't get them. It is so, what it is. All this time to come here, we wanted to get a personal tour down into the houses and walk around. But for us, it's just gonna be a driving tour. We actually had yeah. two nights booked here because we wanted to get a tour, but we're just gonna forfeit one night most likely and, and move up, um, move on to Colorado or deeper into Colorado probably tomorrow, so. We'll just have to take advantage of the hiking a lot more and yeah. check out more things, which is fine. Make the best of it. Yeah, I have no, no problem. It's a beautiful campground. It, it hopefully doesn't get too busy. The weather's perfect right now. It's supposed to be high of mm -hmm. 80 degrees. We scored a really good site. We got it here rained really a little early. bit, yeah. So it's, we got trees everywhere. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna jump in the van and uh, get going on uh, checking this place out. Pretty crazy views, huh? I have crazy views of my children behind you. Yeah. Making fun of you. My kids are making fun of me. What are you doing? <laughs> Our first hike in the park was the Step House Trail, which was a short one-mile loop. There were at least two distinct groups that lived in the step house. A basket maker community in the 600s and a Pueblo community around the 1200s. Is that the rock that could have been the fire for us? No, we got around the edges. So that was it for the step house, I guess. That one little section. I thought I was running out of battery in my cannon here, so I didn't take as much video as I hoped. I think Nancy got some on her iPhone, but. It's a pretty small structure, but it's it's amazing they built it out in this. Um, let me look at this view out here. How could you not want to build your house out here? So we're gonna walk back up the trail and go do the Badger hike. I think I'll grab my second battery, and we'll meet you out there. Yeah, which is over there, and then this is where they stored everything. This ginormous space. That's amazing. So we got those 
kind of like uh, badger loop hike done. It was okay. Um, they're all in covered structures as you saw. Not the greatest. Um, the girls were tired, so I'm gonna take the second little loop by myself. Looks like it goes down over this canyon over here. Hoping we can explore some more houses actually, so. And I'm hoping my battery lasts long enough. We'll see. Oh, that's cooler than I would have imagined. The cliff dwellings in Mesa Verde are some of the best preserved ruins in North America. The ancestral Pueblans began living in pueblos they built beneath the overhanging cliffs in the late 1190s. While still farming on tops of the mesas, they lived in the protection of the alcoves for nearly a century. By the late 1200s, they began to migrate south, and by 1300, the occupation of Mesa Verde ended. It is believed that prolonged drought caused the need to move south. We spent the rest of the day driving from overlook to overlook, admiring these amazing ruins. We are so thankful that a National Park Service has taken the time to preserve this for everyone to see. Back at camp, we made these amazing grilled cheese and avocado sandwiches, and then off to bed to move on further into Colorado tomorrow. After we left camp, we had to make a small detour into New Mexico to stop at a Best Buy to pick up a few more terabytes of hard drive space. Then back to Colorado, where we hung out in Durango for a little while before heading off to camp. Walking around our campground, just checking it out, seeing what's out here. Can hi to people. It's not terrible, but again, not. Uh, we haven't had an idea. Well, the one in Utah on the edge was pretty cool. That was a good one. But we've just been camping around a lot of people, which isn't really what we want to do. But sometimes well, you, so get, much you can do. Sometimes you just got to find a place to sleep for the night. So we just had a wonderful evening. We walked around actually and talked to a few other campers, which I'm surprised we did actually. We got a little we're, unlike. I mean, we're friendly. We're super friendly, but we keep to ourselves. Usually in places like this, we kind of keep to ourselves. But we yeah. we just went out there and, and met some great people from Arizona and talked to them for a bit, mm -hmm. and then invited uh, someone to our yeah. campsite to hang Chris, out. Chris from Farmington came up, and she's a first grade teacher. We had a lot of fun talking to her for a long time. And her so. dog Stella. Yeah, who we, I love. We had a really great evening, though I, I kind of came into this with some preconceived notions of it being kind of 
crazy and a lot of people around. A little too much, yeah. I think. But it's been pretty quiet and we had a really good evening, so. It was fun. I think we're gonna grab in the van pretty quick here. The mosquitoes are getting kind of bad, so <laughs> we jump in and watch some Netflix actually, or whatever. And it's actually cold, which is lovely. Yeah, for the first time all, all trip, it's been chilly out, so. It's nice. Um, and in the morning, we gotta try to drive up Highway 550. A little nervous about those steep hills. We had some second gear climbs to get here. But I'm very nervous about these hills. I won't be driving. We will get there and uh, we'll check you guys in the morning. Bye. So now if you can tell by the camera, we have to take a right and it just goes straight up. So we're going to go left so we can turn around and get momentum so we can go up this crazy ass road. So, it's clear babe, it's clear, clear. All right. We're going the wrong way, so yeah. we go the right way. <laughs> or we will not make it up this hill at all. Here we go. There. All right, here we go. We're going. Go, Westy, go! Yeah, we'll make it. I just didn't want to try and turn that steep thing and then I wasn't sure how steep it got after this, so we'll be finding second gear right here. Old Lime Creek Road, thank you for the night. We were finally on the million dollar highway. This is a road I've been wanting to drive for a very long time. As our little water boxer motor pushed us up those hills in second gear, we had plenty of time to admire the views. We finally descended on the small town of Silverton and pulled in for a bit to explore the town. side of a small gravel road maybe five or six miles outside of Silverton mm -hmm. we were starting to head out towards Animus Forks that ghost town out there but us and a parade of giant fifth wheels and side-by-sides and ATVs and Jeeps all going that same direction and that's just not our scene we unfortunately planned this kind of poor and maybe we didn't plan it it's Friday night 4th of July weekend and a lady in the restaurant we talked to said it's gonna be a zoo out there. So we just turned around, found a side road. We're probably gonna camp here tonight. It's just uh, it's raining the anyway, so only place we can find, yeah, only place we can find that has any privacy at all. Mm -hmm. And we don't wanna drive up that pass in this storm. So we're just gonna chill, um, have kind of a rest day, watch some movies, read some books, and then head off for a ride tomorrow. Um, so this will be it for us here yeah. again. Like you said, it's not always amazing sunsets and great camp spots. Sometimes it's on the side of a gravel pit outside of a little town, but it's all the same inside the van. Yep.
right there. After driving the beautiful section of road between Silverton and Uray, we were lucky to find a parking spot on the busy streets. Uray prides itself as being the Switzerland of America, and you can see why with the dramatic mountains in the background. We walked around for a bit, but it was hot and too crowded for us. So, we left. What are you trying to do, Nance? I'm gonna wash my hair. Where? In the lake. Out here? Free bath. Ooh, I like so. it. <laughs> okay. How'd that work out? It's a little rough. rough out I there. did it. Clean here? Yes. What do you think, Nancy? I love it. Pretty cool sight, huh? Yes. Exactly what we want. Rusty up there on the top. This amazing creek here in the shade. Why don't you give me a recap of what happened today? Today was crazy. There was people everywhere. We went, we left, where did we, we camp last night? Outside of Silverton, we went up through Arai and thought we'd enjoy the town, do some hikes and stuff. And as you can see from some of the video, it was crazy. And obviously it's 4th of July weekend, it's Saturday, Saturday night. So we, we stayed for a bit, but it was just a bit overwhelming for me. So we got out of there, came up through Gunnison, and we're kind of on our way to Crested Butte a little bit, but we stopped along this awesome campsite here. Um, and then tomorrow we'll head up over Keebler Pass and off somewhere else. It'll be fun.